to the Luke 418 Radio Network. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. It's going to be an exciting night, folks. Exciting night at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Right here, broadcasting in an undisclosed location. We're going to shut off all our GPS to bring to you from coast to coast. Monday Night Live! It's going to be exciting, folks. Stay tuned. Hold on to your chair. 7 o'clock tonight, Pacific Time. We're going to open the phone lines and love to hear from you so we can pray for you. We're going to see the power of God bring healing to your life. Pastor Val and I will see you tonight on the Luke 418 Radio Monday Night Live. We'll see you then, folks. God bless you. Welcome, folks, to Monday Night Live on the Luke 418 Radio Network. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We are so excited that you are tuned in. We are broadcasting from coast to coast. And I'll tell you one thing. We're going to speak the truth, the truth of God. We're going to expose Halloween's darkness, folks. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to hear things you never heard before. About Halloween and the darkness that takes place that every Christian should not, should not, should not participate in. Tonight, your host, Pastor Bill and Valerie French, with our guest host, Pastor Colette Brudwain. God bless you. Give her a hand, folks. Amen, Mm -hmm. amen. Yay. All right. Mm -hmm. Pastor Colette, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so, so much to invite me to be able to speak tonight with you, Pastor Bill and Pastor Valerie. It would be amazing and powerful night tonight. I just know that I know it will be powerful. Amen, amen. Now, would you open up with a word of prayer for us? Amen, hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight, Lord Jesus, to present to you, Lord Jesus, this beautiful teaching, Lord Jesus, and the knowledge, Lord Jesus. We want to present, Lord, to all this, this beautiful brother and sister in Christ, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to take all the authority and all the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind every occult, every evil spirit that can come to attack this this broadcast tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no power, no authority. We pray, Father Lord Jesus, to everyone they listen right now, Lord, to open their mind, to open their soul, Father Lord Jesus, to receive and to understand, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, to reveal the truth tonight, Lord Jesus. And we want to give all the glory and all the glory to you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. This is the time for you to go ahead and text and take the link and post it on your social media. Call up your aunts and uncles and your cousins and your brothers and sisters. Call up your pastor. Call up the choir. Call Mm. up the evangelist. Call up the prophet to tune in so they can be educated on the darkness. We're exposing the darkness of Halloween. Folks, this is something that's really uh, needs to be exposed. You know, each October, a controversial question comes up. The question is, should Christians celebrate Halloween? With no direct references to Halloween in the Bible concerning the name Halloween, 
there's a resolving the debate that can be challenged. How many Christians or how should Christians approach this Halloween? Is there a biblical way to observe this secular holiday? If you go ahead and don't mute your mic there, uh, Colette, just leave it open because uh, we're getting a lot of static. Um, folks, we, how, how do we in a biblical way celebrate Halloween? Does God want us to celebrate Halloween? Should Christians approach Halloween or shouldn't they approach Halloween? Now, the Christian's perspective on Halloween, trick or retreat, Christian perspective on Halloween are sharply divided. Some feel completely complete freedom to observe the holiday, while others run and hide from it. Many choose to boycott or ignore it, while a number of believers celebrate it, though positive or imaginative observances, Christian alternatives to Halloween, some even take advantage of Halloween evangelistic opportunities. So we have Christians that are um, churches that are out there uh, uh, celebrating the harvest, okay? Um, they bring the um, uh, ghouls and spooky costumes into church and they have an event of harvest. Uh, should we even be celebrating harvest? Now, Pastor Valerie is going to share a little bit about the background of Halloween. Halloween is a devilish plot to deceive, kill, and destroy. Halloween is just around the corner. It is a holiday that for the most Americans is full of whimsy and devilish fun. People, and especially Christians, should be aware of what Halloween really is and to stay far away from it. But where did it start? It began over 2,000 years ago with people known as the Celtics. They lived in what is today England, Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. This day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter a time of year that was often associated with human death. This was also the beginning of the Celtic New Year, time to give thanks to the sun god for the harvest. Halloween, or All Saints Day, Hall Hollows Eve, or All Souls Day is a festival. It was held up to honor the Samhain, or it can be pronounced Sawin, the so-called Lord of Death. Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Sawim, when it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to the earth. If food and shelter were not provided, these evil spirits would cast spells and cause havoc toward those failing to fulfill their requests. Sacrifices were offered on this night to the dead spirits because it was thought they visited their earthly dwellings and former friends. There was a prevailing belief among all nations that the, dead of the, the death of the souls of the good men were taken possession of by good spirits and carried to paradise. But the souls of the wicked men were left to wander in the space between earth and the moon or consigned to an unseen world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols, for you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty." These wandering spirits were in the habit of haunting the living, but there were means by which ghosts might be exorcised. To exorcise these ghosts, that is to free themselves from their evil sway, they would have set out food and provide shelter for them during the night. 
If they were satisfied with their offering, they would leave them in peace. If they were not, they were believed to cast an evil spell on them. To commemorate this event, the Druids built huge sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals and sacrifices to the Celtic deities. And in these bonfires, they not only burnt animals, they burnt people. It was a very wicked, wicked, evil thing to do on this night. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes, typically consisting of animal heads and skins, and attempted to tell each other's fortunes. And because they wore costumes, they were trying to hide from the demons so they would not be taken into their torture. It is, not, it is not a well-known fact that on Halloween night, there is many, many children and animals that are sacrificed. The devil doesn't want this widely known because the tremendous secrecy that is kept about these dark rituals. And Pastor Bill will talk about these dark satanic rituals in this broadcast. There is another scripture that talks about not observing Halloween in Deuteronomy. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or is a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because these abominations the Lord your God drives them out before you. You shall be blameless between, before the Lord your God. And that was Deuteronomy chapter 18, 9 through 13. Pastor? Wow. That's amazing. We're seeing the roots of Halloween. Sawween. And I'll tell you something. It's very evil, folks. And this is continuing on today. This isn't just something that's just ancient. It's still practice today. You know, what does the Bible say about Halloween? Many Christians believe that participating in Halloween is a form of involvement in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness, which is forbidden in Scripture. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 7 through 15, do not participate in the things that these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as possible, so live as people of light, for the light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Expose them. It is shameful even to talk about these things that the ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it said, wake up, wake up, O sleeper, wake up, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Now, on the other hand, many believers consider the modern-day Halloween activities of most to be harmless and fun. They are those who say that demonizing Halloween is an attempt on the part of some Christians to remove themselves from the world, ignoring Halloween or celebrating it. Only with believers is not exactly an evangelical approach. The scripture says that believers are supposed to become all things to all men so that by all possible means they might be saved or they might save some, some in 1 Corinthians 9.22. This is what many people bring up this scripture here to try to um, present a scripture for their stance and their belief system of that it's okay to go out into modern Halloween and activities and, and just have some fun in the name of Halloween. Now, 
Christians Against Halloween group the celebration with witchcraft and stand in verses like ones like this, Deuteronomy 18, 12 through, uh, 10 through 12. From example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as burnt offerings. And do not let your people practice fortune telling or sorcery or allow them to interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or to cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits from the dead. Anyone who does these things is an um, abomination to the Lord. Now, these verses make it very clear what a Christian should not do. But many Christians think, well, hey, I'm not sacrificing my children. I'm not doing burnt offerings on Halloween. I'm just going out there trick-or-treating, getting some candy, having some fun. I'm just go going out there to, to just have fun in the name of Halloween and just scare some people, you know, get some laughs. This is what Christian, many Christian people believe. How many are calling forth the spirits of the dead? Many similar Bible verses condemn pagan practices, but none specifically warns against observing Halloween. Now, this is their stance. This is what they say. Yes, it's true. The word Halloween is not mentioned in the Bible. And so, if you're trying to build a doctrine... Uh, because the word Halloween's not in the Bible and, and you're try, trying to say, well, since it's not in the Bible, that you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and celebrate Halloween. Okay? But does the Bible talk against the practice of evil? Halloween is about ghouls, about the spirit of fear, the spirit of murder. It's about beheading people, eating flesh, blood everywhere. It's about conjuring demons through this act of sacrifices of animals and humans. What does the Bible say about this? About celebrating Halloween. This is what the word Halloween means is fright. Horror, scared out of your wits, death, sacrifice, torture, blood, eating parts of the human body, and conjuring up demons. 1 Corinthians 10 21 states, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot participate in the table of the Lord and the table of demons. In Ephesians 5.11, it states, Take no part of the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And um, the third John, uh, it'd be, uh, thir uh, third John, it'd be chapter 1, verse 11. It says, Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whatever does good is from God. Whatever does evil is, has not seen God. So folks, here's the verses that are speaking against Halloween. If you're a true believer in Christ Jesus, you must follow exactly the rules of the kingdom of God. Here's another rule. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Bilal? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. 
It means, folks, that there's three compartments that are in you. The, um, the uh, spirit compartment, the soul compartment, the human body, the body, body, soul, and spirit. Now, you're the temple, meaning that the Holy Spirit, if you are a true believer in Christ Jesus, where you have committed your life over to Christ to walk in holiness and righteousness, you have been, uh, you believe in the Lord, you commit your life to him in the fullness of 110% to walk in holiness and righteousness, to forsake sin, and you've been water baptized, submerged under water, then you're a true believer, a born-again believer in the kingdom of God. Now, a born-again believer must follow the rules of God. Now, every born-again believer, your spirit compartment, that is where God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit lives. For we are the temple, temple we, are the, we are the temple of the living God, as God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from the mist and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you. I will be your father. And you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. So in order, the instruction is that we're not to participate with anything that has to do with evil, with torture, sacrifice, even if it's just a toy, if it's eating the candies, do you realize that, that eating these candies that have been presented and made specifically for Halloween Day is an abomination? It is a sin because you're eating candy or food that's been set out to an idol. Halloween is an idol. That's why everybody comes out and worships it worldwide. It says in Romans 12, 2, it states, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By the testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Folks, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6, 12, it says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. That's why we're sounding the alarm. We're sounding the alarm. We're putting it on the megaphone because it says, do not be deceived because the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. You cannot sin and think you can get away with it. God is not mocked. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Pastor Colette. Yes. Wow, this is powerful. God's word speaks against Halloween. What are your thoughts on this? The sad, sad part about Halloween is the people, they just see the costume, they see the, the, the joy to put everything outside, and, and they, just, they, they just joy themselves to do it. And some church, very sad, very sad part, uh, it was a church in Las Vegas where I went there, and they make a tunnels inside the church for the kids. They go there. It's dark, dark, dark tunnels there. And they think it was fun. It was just fun. The thing they don't understand is because we make ourselves to be in agreement what Satan is doing around the world. And that's why they don't understand. They don't understand the Spirit of God, what God is doing, but in the same time, they don't understand the spirit of evil, what they are doing with the Christian people in the world. This, this for me, is like uh, every time I say to them, you know, okay, why, why you put the stuff in your home? It's, it's evil. It's not evil. It's just Halloween. And I say, yeah, but do you realize what you put in your house? It's Halloween. It's evil. 
No, it's not. They, they really, really don't don't want to understand, because you know, God always gave us the possibility to understand, but the people they don't want to open their mind. It's about everything else and and their life. They don't want to open their mind to understand the real truth what God He want to teach them. They. They just block everything. It's so, so sad. How many house, Christian house, you find skeleton and you find a, a dead, uh, um, the, the deaf head there and skeleton there. And it's, it's a deaf spirit. But they say, no, it's just fun. I say, it's not fun. It's a deaf spirit. It's the same thing than if we talk about the, the, in Mexico, the, the, the day of, of the, the, the day of death, example. And, and they celebrate the people, they die, and they put the skeleton in the ground, and they put the fruit. And we talk about Christian people doing that. That means we are really, really blind, Pastor Bill. Uh, we her we mind, are. her will, it's completely uh, block, completely block. It is. It is. Our, our mind and our will. See, see, we're not being taught right for one thing. Mm. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Right? And then it says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Then it says, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Amen. Third John, chapter 1, verse 11. And then it says here, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but expose them. Ephesians 5, 11. Folks, here it is. It's telling you right here. Then it tells you in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. And this is what um, Pastor Colette's talking about. Talking about the Christians are taking the cup of demons. He says you yes. cannot participate of the Lord's table and the tables of demons. Folks, this is what you call a lukewarm Christian. And mm -hmm. God says that he will send the death spirit, the death angel, excuse me, the death angel after mm. the lukewarm and take him out. He, right now, God is cleaning the church. God has brought judgment to the church, and it starts with the church right now. Isn't that right, Pastor Valerie? That's right. He has sent judgment to the earth, so I would not be participating in anything ungodly or evil, especially in this time in the last days or ever. You know, when I was young, it was the same thing with us as children as with many households. We were never taught that Halloween was bad. We just thought it was a fun Holloway. And I put fun in parentheses because it was just fun for us as kids to go out and, and get candy all over the neighborhood and come home and eat it. And it was just a wonderful time of playing around and you know, back in that day, when I was little, nobody talked much about any of the evil things that people are doing in the Halloween celebration now. It was very uh, benign back then, and, and we just, you know, looked at the, the parents would look in the candy to make sure there was no uh, razor blades or anything like that, or any staples or anything. Yeah, that's what we thought it was benign, but, but actually was it, was, it. it was against what God told oh, us yeah, to do. Oh yeah, it was just as evil as it is today. Yeah, and there's and, so <laughs> much more now that's more evil. Yeah. And even we had heard Priscilla gave a great presentation, Oh, she by sure the way. did. Matter of fact, you got to go to her podcast, go to, actually download the app, Luke 418 Radio app, and go to, uh, actually you can download it at the uh, Luke418radio.com, download the app, and go into the a podcast and uh, look for um, Priscilla's podcast. I believe it's what Kingdom Family Arise. Arise uh -huh. yes. And look for Halloween. Boy, you will just, your socks will be blown eyes off. Eyes will be open. Didn't oh, she yeah, know? your she eyes will be open. Her children didn't even want to do trick or treat. <laughs> Who, who's heard of children <laughs> that don't want to do trick or treat? Her, their kids' eyes are open. Boy, they're the ones saying, no, mom, we, <laughs> man, this is too evil. Too we want to, yeah, yeah, we want to go home. <laughs> we don't want to do Halloween. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. It was terrible. And, you know, now I don't, you know, we don't observe anything near that holiday. We know how evil it is. We know what goes on in the demonic realm and the blood rituals that they perform that night. 
and uh, the children that are killed. You know, people just don't want to admit or see it. They just want to remain uh, deaf and dumb. They just don't want to know that these evil things take place on Halloween. And the main thing is because they're having fun and having parties with their friends, and they don't want to give that up. But they're having fun with evil. I know. Mm -hmm. You see, sin is fun. Sure it is. Until payday. Yeah. <laughs> right? Then it's no mm. fun. God isn't mocked. He says the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. Mm. We, just, we just read that scripture. The wrath of God is coming upon the children. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. It says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of the disobedience. And that's, actually, that's what's happening right now. God is bringing judgment to the church. He's released the angel of death. And he says he's going after the lukewarm Christians. Mm -hmm. That means that there's no more grace for them. Time is up. Mm -hmm. they, they have really refused God's goodness and kindness. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, people are going to stand before the Lord and he's going to uh, ask them, why did you celebrate that evil holiday? It's your worshiping Lucifer. And mm -hmm. go, no, I wasn't. I just had candy and had fun and, you know, had a few drinks and, and played with, you know, had a lot of dinners with my friends and enjoyed it and all that. What's wrong with that? But they're not going to be able to say any of that because when they stand before the Lord, they, God everything will be in the open of what they've done in their life. And mm -hmm. they will see the, the darkness and how they were just dancing with the devil. And then if they are unredeemed, they will go to hell for eternity. And folks, Halloween is nothing compared to hell. The devil wants to make Halloween fun and exciting, colorful, and a wonderful party atmosphere. But I'll tell you one thing, hell is nothing of anything of that sort. Hell is fire, brimstone, pain, demons tormenting you eternally, and you can never get away from it. It's, it's amazing how people do not see the repercussions for celebrating this Halloween and not giving it up. You know, it's, it's, it's the ignorance of evil that's not being taught. You see, mm -hmm. that's what the church needs to know is about evil. We need to know your enemy. You, know, you need to know the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18 talks about the corrupt church. Mm -hmm. And uh, these things says the Son of God is Jesus, his, whose eyes are like flame of fire. His feet are like fine brass. I know your works. He's talking to the church. I know your works, your love, and your service, and your faith, and your patience, as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce and teach and seduce and to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and check this out and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Folks. Halloween day is the day, is the climax day of evil. They call it a holy evil day. And they're, they're doing sacrifices of humans that day to Satan, to Lucifer. And they're conjuring and invoking demons so they, they will be empowered with more evil. And so these corporations that create this candy, do you know who they're dedicating this candy to? Folks, we're living in a fallen world and we just can't be deceived into a lullaby of this evil that's being celebrated. God says, come out of the world and be holy. Be perfect. Walk in perfection because he says, I am holy. It's a command, folks, that you walk in holiness and righteousness and put on the image of Christ. Pastor Collette. Yes. Pastor Bill and Pastor Valley, I would like to mention something very, very special. Not a long time ago, I have somebody from my church uh, 
was going to a church and the lady came to him and just started to talk with him. And she just say verbally like this, I am a witch. And he said, what are you doing over here? She said, I come to the church. I am allowed to come to the church. I am a believer. How you can be a believer and you can be a witch? This time of the years, listen very carefully now, people. This time of the year is the time of the witch. Very, very, very powerful, powerful thing they do now. We call that astral projection. Some some city, some country, some city, like New York and California, they're really, really strong about witch. They have a lot of witch there, and they do. that's what they do. That's what they like to do. They do astral projection. And this time of the year now, they prepare all the food. They program everything from the day, the Halloween day, to do some human sacrifice. But from now, what they are doing, they are doing astral projection. Something happened. Something happened one week ago. Somebody from her church, uh, one day they call me because they have the same, same dream. Imagine that there, there are two sisters, there are twins, and the husband, powerful Christian people, very powerful. And uh, they, they don't do nothing witchcraft. They're men of God, women of God. And then the, the two sisters wake up in the morning with the same dream. And one specially, the dream never want to stop. The dream will stop and come back again and stop and come back again. The only way she could come out from the dream, and it was not a dream because it was, it was something happening right now, is because I call and the same time I call, that's the only way she could come out because she heard the phone ring and she could take the phone and say, oh my God, please, 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 Pastor Colette. I have such a bad dream, but I, and then she explained to me what's happening. Now the sister, after we finished to call, have the same, same dream. What's happened, the two sisters in the past, long time ago, they have a friend, and the friend they have, that was before they were born again Christian, she was a witch, and she was practicing her, her, her power, about the witch, and they knew exactly what she was doing, and she tried to make them to be involved for what she was doing, but they don't, they don't want to be involved, and, but they build to each other, they build a soul time, and the way she was talking with them, it's like, you will never leave me, I need you, you will never leave me, and the day they came born again Christian, they decided to be separated with this woman because they realized she was a witch and, and it was not good for them to be with them. And she was very, very angry. Now these people move from one city to another one, uh, uh, one state, excuse me, from another state, and now they are with me in, in the church. And now what's happened, this woman now, she's very angry. And what she's doing, then she's a witch, they call the uh, sexuality sacrifice. I don't know if you really know what it is, but it's awful because I ministered to some people, they were doing human sacrifice, sexuality sacrifice, and that's why she was projecting to them. But now the big surprise people, listen to this one. The husband have the same dream. Wake up, went to see his wife and explain his dream. And she said, oh my God, what? We had the same dream. We just talked with Pastor Colette and she did ministry to us about the dream we had there. Sure, it was a spirit of Jezebel, it was a spirit of death was there too. But what I want to talk to you people, astral projection and this time of the year now, in September, October, and November to December, it's really, really strong. And that's what the wish they are doing to the Christian people. And uh, believe me, it's happened, it's real. Uh, I ministered to more people before, and 
they, they receive the astral projection very, very strong. And who is inside inside the astral projection? Uh, we call the the, the, the the demon of Ra, Sun God. Very, very Sun God is very powerful about I want I don't want to say the word powerful, excuse me. I want to say the power he have about astral projection is really, really strong. Because the one day I ministered to somebody Somebody was a woman, and she had this, the demon of Ra, and the demon of Ra she had was doing astral projection to some people and the same college where she was. That means people, believe me, this is true, it's happened, uh, it's not fake, it's not something we want to create because it's happened, we, we, we ministry to these people. And we know it's there. That means that's what it's sad. The Christian people don't want to believe that. They they really don't want to believe spirit of death, spirit of projection. They don't want to believe that. They just want to be comfortable in their in their in their church and their home. But it's happened. Yeah, they want to be comfortable in their sin. Yeah. Yeah, they want to be comfortable in their sin. And when you go ahead and expose their sin, their demons come out, <laughs> and they get all angry at you, you know? But you see, we got to have the Elijah anointing of that boldness and exposing the devil, exposing his works, folks. Because I'm going to tell you something. You know, people have heard a little bit about uh, satanic ritual abuse, well, let me tell you something. The mm. whole calendar from January all the way through the ending of December, then starting all over, has to do with, with satanic rituals every single month. Mm. Okay? Every single month. And so in August, you know, well, here we are in July. Uh, July 20, uh, actually June 21st, summer solstice, was feast day. And so what was required was orgies. And the orgies didn't care if it was uh, uh, animal or human. And uh, had to have uh, also human sacrifice on that day. With any age, male or female or animal. And that just continues on through July 1st. And then it goes through July 20 to 26, abduction ceremonies, preparation, holding of sacrificial victims for the grand climax. So there's a certain time period for they go out and start abducting people. And then in July 25th, St. James Day, gathering herbs. And then July 27th, the grand climax, five weeks, one day after summer solstice. They're having human sacrifices, folks, female, child, or adult. Then that just moves right into August 1st, Sabbath festival. Blood requires blood, animal or human sacrifices. This is happening all the time. Just like if you're a Christian and you go to church on a regular basis, they're faithful and doing their religion and bringing praise and glory to Satan and Lucifer. They're committed. They are faithful to what they're doing and what they're practicing. We just uh, finished up in August uh, just recently. And then, again, there is blood and sexual uh, um, sacrifices and um, rituals going on. We just finished up in September. It was uh, September the 7th was the marriage to the beast. And that was sexual and sacrifice dismemberments of infants. And it had to be a female infant or up to age 21. Folks, they're serious about doing this. And they do it right under our nose. And because of 2017, February the 15th, that was the day when the world of evil united together and they had become very united together in doing human sacrifices, rituals like clockwork to produce power throughout the whole globe. To come against the church, the preachers, the Christians, the evangelists, 
the prophets and to subdue the works of Christ. And let me tell you something. They're doing a really good job because there's so many people that have less, uh, left the Christian church and their ears have become itching. They have left the faith, which is fulfilling the prophecy of the word of God, and they've actually turned themselves over to evil. Now today, they call themselves a Christian pagan witch. What do you think about that, Pastor Valerie? That is oxymoron if I ever knew there was one. <laughs> It, but you can't be a Christian and a witch at the same time. And I see now with these angel cards that are very demonic, it's like Christian tarot cards. And it's just, you know, how can you join Satan with Jesus? It's just no way possible. They're so opposite. And these people will try to make it work. And I, I don't know how they do it. They, but then people are succumb to the deceivement of these things because they make it, like I said, they make it, quote, fun. And people want to have fun. They want to have parties. They want to dress up. They, wanna, they don't want to think about horrific things. They just want to have fun. So if the devil can dress up everything and make it fun and delightful and, and you know, all the drinking and everything that tastes so good and, the, and, and they can just get drunk and they can go and have sex with anybody they want to. I mean, people want to just let go and let go of all their, uh, you know, anything that would keep them from doing that. And they would just let go and do whatever they want to do. And that's where the demonic gets involved. And open, they open doors to the demonic to come in. And when they've got done doing these orgies and all these things, the next day they find out it's not so fun after all because they don't take home anything except a bunch of demons with them. They wake up demonized. And then they're in horrific trouble. And then guess where they go to get help? Yeah, they come to Luke 18 yeah. Church. Folks, we're going to have to take a station break right now. This is the top of the hour. We'll be right back. But take the time. Call your friends. Call your family. Post it on social media, the links, because we're going to be taking some phone calls next. Welcome to the Luke 418 Radio Network. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. It's going to be an exciting night, folks. Exciting night at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Right here, broadcasting in an undisclosed Location. We're going to shut off all our GPS to bring to you from coast to coast Monday Night Live. It's going to be exciting, folks. Stay tuned. Hold on to your chair. 7 o'clock tonight, Pacific Time. We're going to open the phone lines and Love to hear from you so we can pray for you. We're going to see the power of God bring healing to your life. Pastor Valor and I will see you tonight on the Look 418 Radio Monday Night Live. We'll see you then, folks. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the God, Lord. Bless God bless you. Thank you for joining us, joining us here at the Monday Night Live with your hosts, Pastor Bill French and Pastor Valerie and Pastor Colette from the Nevada Luke 418 Pahrump Church. Give God a shout. Amen. Welcome back, folks. I tell you, I'm so excited about 
revealing, exposing the darkness of Halloween. Because you see, this is what's problem. This is a big problem with the Christians today. They refuse the knowledge of God. It's not that they don't know it. They refuse it. God is not mocked. Judgment's coming to their door. God says the wrath of God is for the disobedience of the children. And so you want to walk in holiness and righteousness, know the rules of the kingdom of God, and please your heavenly father. Isn't that right, Pastor Valerie? That's right. You must please the Lord and do things the right way and understand that there's a lot more going on in the heavenly realm, the unseen realm, and under the earth in the dark realm. There's so much more going on in the spiritual realm than anyone understands. And God understands and and knows these things, and he knows why he's telling us not to do these things. There's very, very good reasons why the Lord tells you no. Oh, absolutely. He ain't no killjoy. He, you know, you need to be obedient to God. And I'll tell you, he has a good reason for everything because we're not to have any part of evil. We're to come out of the world and be separate. And you see, this means you need to be, you need to be accounted for for God, not having one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. That's a lukewarm Christian and God's death angel is coming against the lukewarm as the prophets have proclaimed God's judgment on the church and it will continue all the way to the ending of December. This is the time to repent. This is the time to turn from your wickedness and repent and then embrace God's heart and grace the arms of Jesus and embrace his life instead of embracing death. What do you think about that, Pastor Collette? Yes, Pastor Bill. You know what? The the sad, sad part there, uh, somebody came to my house uh, two weeks ago. This woman, she had around her, her wrist, uh, her arms, some bracelet there. And it was the eyes of Aris, and it was a Buddhist uh, sign there she had around. And I say, what you have there? And she and she said, oh, this is, is, is my protection. And I asked her, I said, you're Christian? She said, yeah, I am a, I am a born-again Christian. And then I told her the truth. And she took the bracelet, and I, and I said, what do you want to do? I, she said, I will put it in my pocket. <laughs> I said, no, you need, I said, <laughs> she put it in her pocket, huh? Hey, I said, you need to destroy that. She said, oh, no, I cannot destroy that. I said, she said, I love this bracelet. I cannot destroy that. Oh, but no. she said, if you don't want to use it, I would don't use it. I said, I didn't, I didn't ask you to don't use it. I just want to tell you the truth. But they don't, they don't want to receive the truth. No, because she loves it. Yeah, she yeah. loves it. She loves it. That's why God says don't love anything in the world. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you're not to love it. You can use it for the glory of God, but you can't love it. You're not That's a part right. of the world. Yeah, we're not a part of the world. Mm. You know, you know, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little bit about you there, uh, Pastor Colette. Let me tell you something. What's really pleases God. Really mm-hmm. pleases God. You know, God, Pastor Colette has opened her house to bring glory to Father God through His Son, Jesus Christ. She Mm -hmm. utilizes her whole entire house for the glory of God. I'll tell you something. She gets to live in a beautiful house, enjoy the house, but also enjoy the, uh, the, uh, the property to be given to God for His glory. She ministers people. She does weddings there. You know, she gets together with the body of Christ and minister to him. I, I tell you, God's heart is so pleased. You mm-hmm. see, folks, we, we can't be a, a, attached. We can't love items and material things. We need to dedicate it over to the Lord so the Lord can use it for his glory. Pastor Bill, what you just say there, the reason why... Uh, first of all, I am very, very blessed. I am so, so blessed. And I am blessed because what people, they don't do in the Christian world, they don't see the truth. They never say the truth. That means that's why God, I opened my house over here, but the people, they come to my house, 
they have to know the truth. Absolutely. They Absolutely. Have to know. Hmm? Amen. Absolutely. People are connected to, to um, you know, folks, what's, what's really bad is this. You know, let's say that you dated a lot of people before you got married and you got married and you're still holding on to those things that your boyfriend or somebody gave you. Those become Trojan horses where an avenue, because there's a soul tie connected to it, and the devil comes in. You know, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 says, don't give place to the devil. Don't give a, 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 a foothold to the devil. Don't open a <clears throat> ungodly doors for the devil to come in and torment you. You got to get rid of those things. You need to mm. break off the curses and smash them, burn them, get them out of your life. And start focusing on your husband or your wife instead of remembering the past of these exes that you had because that will Satan will use to steal, kill, and destroy your life. That's right. Um, you know, I had uh, some photographs of old boyfriends in my garage in a box for many years. And I wasn't thinking about it at all. And then the Holy Spirit put that in my mind, that I had to go out and get those pictures and destroy them. Mm -hmm. And I did. And there's a release in the spirit from doing that. These things are almost like tentacles that latch onto you like an octopus, and they, they're in your soul. And it's not a good place to be. It creates soul ties, ungodly soul ties. And we need to relinquish this and cut them off and get rid of those things. And I remember uh, there's a, several people that we've ministered at Luke 418 Church in times past that we've told them to get rid of certain items, but mm -hmm. they were very tied to them. And I remember one in particular, uh, Pastor Bill said that, and, and uh, showed me about these, this man, and he had a beautiful big house, and he had these kachina dolls all over the house in glass cases. And they were beautiful and very large. And they and were very, worth a fortune. Very expensive, worth a fortune, yes. And after telling that he has to get rid of those, he wouldn't do it. Right, Pastor Bill? Right. He was having these uh, poltergeist activities going uh, on. The, 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 the dolls were cursed. But no, he decided he, he wanted to keep those demons and throw out God. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. It's not worth it. Uh, we talk about uh, we talk about the witch, Pastor Valerie and Pastor Bill. I ministered to somebody one day, and uh, this young woman, uh, uh, I was ministered to her, and the witch came up, and I say, "Who you are?" She said, "I am the witch." And then I asked her which curse she did to this woman, and she said, "I did the same curse than her mother." The mother died at the age of 42 years old for a cancer in her knee, mm. and and the, the the cancer went up to to the to everywhere anyway. Wow! And then I was and then what's happened many many years ago, three generation ago in Armenia, uh, the, the the time where the the Turkey was attacking Armenia people, uh, the the grandmother three generation call a witch come to her home the witch came and she wrote the names a name to the wall and after she did all that for the three generation all the newborn men die mm. wow all of them die and this young woman at the age of 28 years old manifesting in my office and the witch say, I will kill her the same way I kill her mother. Wow. And the witch was, came up to, high to the sofa, and she was very, very strong. And she said, I am the one to do sacrifice. That means it was a sacrifice ritual for all the ancestors. What I want to bring you people. It's real. It's happened. They are there. It's happened. The people I just talked to you before, the two women I was talking to you before, what's happened with the friend? She was a witch. They get a, they get a covenant together, and in the spirit, one woman there could never be married. 
and God showed me why she could never be married is because it was a covenant with the witch. They were married together in the soul. Mm. And, and we broke the covenant with the soul. They are coming this week to receive more ministry. But what I want to say there, it's happened, people. Yes. The wish can touch your soul and seal together and get married in the spirit with you, and you will never be released. That's right. And you right. will have a curse for the rest of your life. That's right. Many, curse, many Christians today are living under curses, but their pastors, their churches aren't teaching this. And so when no. you bring it up, they think of you like, whoo you lost your mind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Something weird about you. <laughs> but you see, that's where Satan has done such a great job in mm. bringing such a lie. So they believe the lie. So if they believe that lie, then they start repelling against true Christianity. Um, that's see, it. Yeah, that's how that's how the devil does it, folks. We need we're exposing how the devil does it. You need to know. You see, you not you need to start looking at things in the spiritual realm instead of looking at it in the natural, because then you start using your analytical mind, and the devil uses that to lead you down a ungodly belief system that you believe, and it's very difficult for you to get set free and bring inner healing into your life. Give God a shout for that. That's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Anybody who practices Halloween thinks it's just a bunch of fun, you better rethink that because all those items you're buying and all the things that you're doing at your house that night are bringing curses on you and your family. Mm. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're going to open up the phone line right now. If you'd like to call in for some prayer or maybe for some deliverance, we'd love to kick the devil's butt. 951-389-4950. Again, that's 951-389-4950. And folks, let me tell you something. We are on live on the Luke418radio.com. Go into the chat room and chat with the other listeners. We're on their live right now. You can ask us questions or or just chat with us. I'll tell you, we would love to pray for you. So again, just call 951 389 Four nine five zero. Maybe you have a question you want to ask us. Call in so we can answer that question for you. I tell you, you have three exorcists sitting here waiting for your call. This is your time in a lifetime. This Amen. is your chance in a lifetime to ask the ask exorcist about your question about deliverance or inner healing or generational curses. Again, that's nine five one. Three eight nine four nine five zero. Back to you, Pastor Valerie. Yes, folks. You know, also watching horror films will re- bring in evil spirits. Also, Oof. we should not watch Halloween movies or horror films because this is totally Satan being able to get in through our eye gates and our ear gates. And we must put the blood of Jesus on our eye gates and our ear gates when we're watching television or looking at YouTube. Because a lot of it will try to sneak in. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let's, let's examine this. If we're watching a horror uh, film, there's dismembering in there, there's sacrifice, there's torture, uh, there's fear. So what demons come in through the eyes there? Let's talk about among this between three of us. For one thing, uh, the demon of fear is coming in. How about you, Pastor Colette? Hey, my God. Whew. You know, the Bible say, and and Matthew, they talk about the eyes. Matthew uh, 6, 22. The lamp of the body is the eyes. For therefore your eyes is good, your your whole body. That means the eyes is very important because that is the that is the place where the demon will come to your eyes and it will go to your soul, and people they don't realize that they they just love the the thrill they say the 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 the, the feeling to to be scared and it's so sad because they build a spirit of fear to come to their life, and the moment the the spirit of fear will come oh my God now. Everything, everything else will come after that. And then they just, they, they don't understand. They don't understand the spirit come to the eyes. The, it's so important. That means you cannot look the movie, the, the fear, the, the movie, the, the, the scary movie. We cannot do that. 
because their eyes is a reflection from the soul. That's right. It's the window to the soul. See, mm. most Christians don't even think about that. They just, oh man, I just want to have in the name of fun, let's get scared. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh. And they don't realize the devil goes, yeah, come on down, come on down so I can enter into your soul. Uh-huh. Through your eyes. So so if fear's there, there's two other spirits there. It's always a given. They, these three always hang out together. It's fear, doubt, and unbelief. Yeah, that's true. Okay? That's true. So now, yeah. if you're watching this horror film, now what else comes in? You got the demon of bloodlust that comes in because you're watching mm. torture. Now the demon of torture comes in. Okay? Now you got the demon of what? Now, after they torture somebody, they're going to eat the flesh. Now you got the demon of eating human flesh coming in. Folks, you, time when you leave the theater or leave your, your, uh, your, um, your living room and go to your bed or go to the store, you're full. You're loaded with demons now, and you don't even know it. You don't feel them come in. You don't sense them come in, and they're going to lay dormant for a while, and then they're going to start building strongholds in you so you can start being plagued with sickness. When the demon comes in, it's going to set up camp, it's going to set up his house, and it's going to examine your body and find out where the weakness is so it can start plaguing you with sickness. And the way how it keeps that sickness there is through strongholds. Yes, the strongholds keep the spirits in there, and fear is one of the strongest of the strongholds, and it's very tormenting. And um, I think also the spirit that uh, is one of the most prevalent spirits in these movies is the spirit of death and destruction. That's right. And the scary part, Pastor Valerie, Pastor Bill, is the young children, 14 years old, go to the movie theater to see scary movie, and then they receive some demon in their life. Because the one, so many times they do that, they're not born again Christian. That means they come possess. And I ministered to a young little girl, 12 years old, and she have a big demon there want to kill her. And she manifests at 12 years old. People, the, the parents, sometimes they don't realize to let the children to see some scary movie where the, the, the children, they manifest. Yeah, that's right. And they have right. fear in their life. That's true. Continue on. And that fear is awesome, horrible. I lived with that fear for many years and got finally mm. free of it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I was tormented day and night with the spirit of fear and uh, had panic attacks all day long, all night long, for many, many years. And it it was just horrific, and the torment was horrific. And, you know, where that started with me was I was about two or three years old, and I went, I lived in South Dakota at the time, and they had, uh, it was base houses because my father was in the Air Force, and uh, they had these big green lawns in the back, and then they had houses around them. And I, would, I walked through the, the lawn, and I went over to my friend's house, and I walked in the door, and it was Halloween. And I walked in the door very naively and innocent, and the, person, the child's father was at the table with a, with a newspaper. And... I was looking right at the newspaper, and I was going to say hi to the, his dad, or whoever it was, her dad, I believe it was, a, a little girl I was with, and he brought down the paper, and he had no head, mm. and it was a costume, and when I, my hair stood up on my head, and I was so terrified as a young toddler, and I turned around crying, screaming, ran all the way home. And I believe that is when the spirit of fear came into me. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I had that horrible problem all the way up until I was about 54 years old. <gasps> wow. Well, you see, folks, Satan does this at an early age to really mess you up as an adult because mm-hmm. he doesn't want you to walk in your birthright and your calling that God's called you to do. Mm-hmm. We got, a, we got a question here in the chat room. Uh, the question is, let's see. If you get demons through movies, how do you get rid of them? Pastor Colette. Oh, my God. Okay. 
It's very simple, people. You're born again Christian, that means you have a power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. First of all, the first thing we have to do is to ask forgiveness. Because without forgiveness, nothing can happen. That means, first of all, you say, Lord Jesus, I want to ask forgiveness, Father, because I, I make myself to see some scary movie where my spirit that is not belong to, 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 to the to the fear about to see scary movie. That means, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me. And then after that, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break every curse could come to my eyes and the spirit. I come into all the witchcraft and all satanists right now. I bind with the three, four core right now. I come and you release my mind. I come and you release my emotion. I come and you release my body. I come and you release my house in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no power, no authority in my house in the name of Jesus. People, you need to take the authority. People, they have a problem to, to to, to speak loud. Some people, they will say, but it's not my personality. It's your personality the day you see the scary movie. That means the day you see the scary movie, it's your personality to be scared. That means if if you were scary, that means you can take the authority the same way you were scared. And believe me, you have to do it. You have to say in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every witchcraft. I bind every spirituality demon right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break you from the root right now. I break all the power you came into my eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the way to do it. We have to do this way. It's not another way because some Christians, they say, yes, but I am very tender. It's not my personality. Forget it's not your personality. We have to say what we have to say, people. That's yeah, right. Ha- yeah. We have to repent, too, and renounce what we did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to start getting the uh, boldness yes. of the Lion of Judah, which yes. is Jesus Christ. Say, God, give me boldness. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Mm-hmm. Fill me with boldness. Amen? Amen, Pastor. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Well, you know, uh, another question is um, uh, regarding astral projection. Mm. What is the silver cord? Now, let me tell you what the silver cord is. Mm. It is what's connected to your spirit. Amen. Yeah. And so, when you astral project, you have your cord connected to the body, connected to your spirit. And when you go places, you'll come right back to your body. Okay? And so... This is what astral projection is. You're leaving your body. Now, the bad thing about it is this. Is that if you... If you're not... If you're out there astral projecting somewhere, who's guarding the body? Mm -hmm. The body's there for the devil to come in. Amen. Okay? That's why we don't astral project. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you stay in your body. Don't be go flying here and flying there out in the second cosmos, talking with creatures out there on Mars and Venus. And uh, so, and don't ever get, don't follow what other deliverance ministers do. Cut the silver cord. Cut. Yeah? You ain't coming back to the body then. <laughs> so mm-hmm. don't be cutting no silver cord. Just leave it alone. That's what it is, folks. It's a tie to make sure that your spirit comes back to your body. If you're practicing astral projection, stop. It's part of of mm. the occultic activity that Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy you when you're out there flying around. The demons come in to your body and they set up camp. You know, Pastor Bill, astral projection, uh, they want to imitate the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what they do. You see, one time my son, he had a scoliosis and, and he was very, very painful. He couldn't move from the bed. And then I went to see a woman of God and, and by faith, I knew I would receive it from God. And this woman, she just looked at me and she blow, uh, 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 just with her mouth, she blow to me and she, she didn't touch me. But I went directly to the ground, and I saw the flame in my body. It was like six six inches high, and the flame came down, and I stayed there for 
20 minutes there. Then I came home. I, I looked at my son and I didn't say a word. I put my hand in this colios. And then after I turned back, I didn't say nothing. I pray. I turned back. And my son, he said, he saw himself going up with the light of God. And the pain was completely gone. Gone, He said, Mom, I saw myself with the light of God and the peace of God was so powerful. That means, that reminds me, Satan wants to imitate everything the Holy Spirit is doing, everything what God is doing. And that's why some Christian people, they think they are doing the right thing. And it's like Pastor Bill say, you will never, never think to disconnect your body with astral projection because it's, a, it's, it's two things is different. One is evil and the other one it came from the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have to take care. We cannot play with that. Absolutely no. Absolutely. Even though the occultists have perfected it to be able to do uh, astral projection rituals and, and, mm -hmm. um, and uh, sexual rituals uh, performed on their victims, uh, mm -hmm. This is something that you don't want to be involved with. You want to quit this ASAP mm -hmm. and just, you know, mm -hmm. ask God to forgive you and break that connection. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Now, there was another question talking about Halloween. Now, some of the, these are parlor games, something you learned when you were a child. And um, some of you guys have uh, played uh, Light as a Feather oh. or Stiff as a Board. Or maybe you played the Ouija board, okay? Mm. And maybe you talk to, talk to the demons. Maybe you even see the demons move the triangle on the Ouija board. Or maybe some of you have played recently that has been played on YouTube, Charlie <gasps> Charlie. Yes. Oh, These things that? are demonic. Don't go near them. You know, a lot of people that have done these uh, broadcasts, on YouTube and different places that they've broadcast these things and live streamed is that they go into these abandoned houses and oh, they, yeah. they love to have these video streams where they're going into these haunted houses. Uh. And I think at first they were just going into these abandoned houses and then it got really popular and then it just kind of, uh, you know, degraded into the going into the tunnels and the things underground and ended up wanting to go into the haunted places and the haunted houses. Well, I'll tell you, they have no protection spiritually. Mm. They think it's just a bunch of fun. And they get in there, and they hear scary sounds, and everybody's going, woo, say scary sounds, and they go scared. They get really scared, run out the tunnels, run out of the houses, and some of them have seen these games on the ground, like Charlie Charlie, where they have a piece of paper, and they have two pencils, and they put one pencil on top of the other. And then they ask it, they write yes and no around the page, and then they ask the spirits questions. And wow. then the spirits will give an answer by moving the pencils. And there's nobody moving, they're touching these pencils. These are the spirits moving these pencils to the yes oh or no God. answer. And this is just like the Ouija board, just like these things, they were very wicked. And you know, when... Um, one of them had gone in there, and they, they had done this broadcast, and they did this, uh, they saw this demon, and they were frightened, and they go running out of the house, but as they ran out, they felt something scratch them from behind, and when they got outside, they lifted up their shirt, and they had three scratches running yeah, down folks, there. What's that, mm, Pastor Bill? How Tell about, me our, what how that about is. our listeners out there? Anybody in the chat room that have ever, ever noticed um, you had three scratches, claw marks on you? Uh, we'll wait for any answers in the chat room. Maybe somebody can call us and say, "Hey, I was doing something and uh, and 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 I was conjuring up something, or maybe I was doing Charlie Charlie. Maybe I was doing the uh, Ouija board." Maybe you were doing something. Maybe you went to a movie and you came back out and you go, wow, what's this? It's burning. And you and you check your body and you got three scratches that look like crawl, claw marks on you. Anybody have those? Go ahead and uh, let us know in the chat room. Give us a call at 951-389-4950. We'd love to hear from you. We would love to pray for you. 
I'll tell you, this is a great topic to to um, really um, go after the demon, huh? That's right. Do you guys realize if you guys have participated in Halloween, you're supposed to repent from that? Ask God to forgive you for that mm. sin? You sinned, folks. You sinned. You mm. violated God's command. I've given you a whole bunch of scriptures there telling you don't participate in it. You need to ask God to forgive you. You need to repent and turn away from that. Pastor Collette? <sighs> Uh, I would like to mention. Oh, something hold on, hold on. We got a we got a call here. Okay. We got a call. Up, oh, that somebody hung up. Call back, okay? <laughs> call back. All right. We just had a call. Whoever mm-hmm. called, call us right back. Got pass it, collect. Yeah, I would like to mention something uh, happened not long time ago. A man, a born again Christian man, he was practicing some witchcraft sacrifice sexuality sacrifice and you want to be free and then uh, we met we met this man in the starbucks and the man he, he was with him do the same thing he was speaking spanish and he didn't understand nothing in, in, in english and the whole time this man was talking to me the other man his eyes was rolling to the back and he was manifesting oh, gosh. and then this man fall to the ground and everybody was penny cake and Hi, Starbucks. And I, hello. We have a call. Welcome Hi. to Hi. welcome to welcome to the Luke four eighteen network. Your uh, your host is uh, Pastor Bill and Pastor Colette and Pastor Valerie. How can we help you? I want to talk to Dear Colette. Okay, Pastor Colette. Yes. Say, say, tell her what you wanted to tell them. Okay, dear Colette, you know that my mom said don't play Charlie Charlie? Yeah. So when I was, so when I was in PK, there was kids playing it, and I accidentally were playing it with them. Do you think me and you, we can ask for forgiveness for God? Yes, yeah, sure, you can ask forgiveness. You want to do that now? Yeah. Say, okay, say I. I. Say your name. Esther. I want to ask Jesus. I want to ask Jesus. To forgive me. To forgive me. Because I played with with Charlie, Charlie. Because I've been playing Charlie, Charlie. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I will never do that again. I will never do that again. And I rebuke Satan. I rebuke Satan. You cannot be in my life. You can't be in my life. I command you to leave me now. I command you to leave me now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, to give me your peace. Thank you, Jesus, to give you... Wait, what? Your your peace. peace. To give me your peace. To give me your peace. Peace. Okay. I love you, Esther. I love you, too. Okay. You will be okay Thank now. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Collette. Bye-bye, honey. I love you. Bye. Praise the Lord. God bless you. That she's was six, Esther. She's six years old. Oh, wow. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give God a shout, yeah, everyone. Give God a God. shout. This wow. precious little girl, listen to me, people. She she have a Bible, and she read her Bible every night. All right. Wow. Praise her God. Her name is Esther, and she can t- tell you all the story about Esther. Wow. And if she have a demon attacking her, she call me all the time. Wow. And she asked me to, to make her free. And if she have a bad dream, she call me. She said, Tia, I have a bad dream now. You need to do something. And she's six years old. Wow. wow. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. Give you the glory. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. six years old. Wow. And she's doing warfare. That's amazing. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> I er- teach her. <laughs> everybody give 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 God a shout. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And you know what, people? She took everything about Walt Disney was evil. Oh, and we got another it out out here. Okay. Welcome. This is the Luke 418 Radio Network. Pastor Bill. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. God bless you, Pastor Bill. And who is this? Pastor Ravi and Pastor Kellogg. This is Daisy. Yeah. Daisy, God bless you. Hi, Daisy. Hi. Oh, my heart is just like, oh, that sweet voice. That is like so inspiring. It's like, it reminds me of have a childlike faith. Yes. So I was just like, wow, that was so good. That was over the top, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Hey. I, I was like, I don't even know if I have to call right now. I'm like, yeah, my emotions the, all over the place. Yeah, the adults are scared to call, and here's a little one calls in. I ain't scared. <laughs> yeah, that just shows you the devil is so afraid of the little ones because when they get born again and they get their spiritual warfare going, oh my gosh, he's defeated completely. Yeah, she confessed. She, no came, she confessed the sin. Yeah. She wasn't afraid of nobody. Did it on live radio. Yeah, got got the forgiven, and she set free. Praise God! Yeah, <laughs> that's how it is, folks. He is amazing. Amen. Oh, man. My heart is just so full. <laughs> Amen. Praise the well, Lord, Jesus. So, I was calling because I did play the games when I was younger. I didn't want to play it. Um, I was always like the very scared type also when I was very young. But, you know, like how family and friends, they kind of just see it as, oh, it's just fun. Or like when you're very little, they're like, oh, it's so hot, hot, you know, like laughing at the reactions that we get. So I know my parents, like, used to put a oh, scary movie and I would watch it, even though I didn't want to. So, and then my mom had a Ouija board and Ooh. I didn't want to play either because I really didn't care too much for it. Oh, but then I, I don't know how it came about for us to play it, but it was, I think it was me my brother, and I don't know if it was his ex-girlfriend, and I don't know if it was my oldest sister, but I know we had played it. Um, I didn't believe in it. I was just like, this is just fake, because I just thought it was just, like, something that you did, and then, like, the person would move it to make you think that it's really moving. It wasn't, so I really didn't believe it. Uh, and then, like, it had moved, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, here we go, like, the trick, and my sister was like, my ex sister, I think it was at a time. I forgot which who it was. And she was like, "No, it's it's not me. It's really moving." And then my brother's like, "I'm not moving it." And I was like, "You guys are playing. Like someone's someone's lying." But I, unfortunately, you know, I did have I did dabble in that game. Um, and also the stiff as a board. I remember also doing that, and um, the Bloody Mary. So you did all um, the father games then? I, mm. <laughs> now, when yeah, you, when it was you, like, I really didn't have no belief in it, though. I was just matter. like, oh, this is so fake. Yeah. I know. And then we used to just do it just to be like, oh, let's see if anything will happen. But I don't know. When and did, I did the Bloody Mary. I remember it was in elementary school. Did you do Bloody Mary? Did you see anything in the mirror? No. No? We. I don't know. No, uh, I don't know. It was me and a girl, and we were in the bathroom, and then um, we had done it, but we were laughing, and then we heard like a noise, but I don't know if it was like the custodian or if it really was a noise. And then we just we just ran out the bathroom. We were like, let's get out of here. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, yep. yeah. I think I was like in I don't know, it was fourth grade, like third, fourth, fifth grade. I'm not sure which one. Pastor Colette. Okay, no matter if you did that, then you were young. No matter if you did that, you, you didn't believe it. The spirit, he don't mind yeah. if you don't believe it. The spirit, he don't mind the age you have. What I want to bring there, it's uh, he don't mind the age, he, would, he don't mind the time. What he did, he sent the curse to your life. He sent the curse about many direction in your life. He can be a, a money, he can be a... a, a husband and wife, he can be with the children, that means we have to break the curse. We have to break every curse, yeah. what we did in the past in the witchcraft. 
and uh, we have to renounce. Yeah. We absolutely we cannot pass that. No, uh, the the people I was talking early for the three generation, the witch she wait three generation to kill my friend at forty two years old, and she want to kill the, uh, wow. the, the the daughter. You see, that means the demon he ha- he has no time. He don't mind about the time. That's mm-hmm. why I say to people, we have to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Pastor, Pastor Click, could you lead everybody into a mass, a repentance from Hallelujah, bloody, uh, um, let's see, <laughs> let's see, Bloody Mary and uh, Stiff as a Board and Charlie Charlie and also participating in Ouija the boards. Ouija board. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could you just lead them into a repentance and go from there? Uh, Pastor Bill is, is the name I would don't remember. Okay, that you will need to help me because okay. you know French Canadian. Yeah, that, <laughs> good French Canadians are the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so folks, folks, so let's do this. I'll start it off, and then pass it. Collect you go, you go after that. So, folks, those who have uh, participated in any of those, mm-hmm. uh, Charlie, Charlie, stiff as a board, Bloody Mary, or played the Ouija board, I want you to say this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And- in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Christ. Name of- I repent. I repent. Repent. Okay, I repent from. I repent. Participating. I repent from participating in Charlie Charlie. In Charlie Charlie. Stiff as a board. Stiff as a board. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. And playing the Ouija board. Playing the Ouija board. Even though I didn't believe it. Even though I didn't believe it. It was wrong. It was wrong. And I renounce playing these evil games. And I renounce playing these evil games. And if these demons have come in through that. And if these demons have come in through that. Demons of witchcraft. Demons of witchcraft. Demons of pride. Demons of pride. Demons of rebelliousness. Demons of rebelliousness. Death and destruction. Mm -hmm. Death and destruction. I command them to leave and come out of me now. I command them to leave and get out of me now. Father God, forgive me for participating in these evil games. Mm Mm-hmm. Father God, forgive me for participating in these evil games. Son of David, have mercy upon me. Son of David, have mercy upon me. Son of David, have mercy Mm. upon me. Son of David, have mercy upon me. I was wrong. I was wrong. I didn't know better. I didn't know better. Forgive me. Forgive me. And I receive your forgiveness now. And I receive your forgiveness now. Mm. And I choose this day unto heaven. I choose this day. And I choose this day unto heaven. To forgive myself. To forgive myself. To forgive myself. And I speak this for every part inside me. And I speak this for every part inside me. Including myself. Including myself. Including myself. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Give God a shout. Amen. Amen. Now, now, the legal right is broken. Now, Pastor Colette's going to go ahead and search for Amen. anything there. And if something's there, then you need to let it up and let it come out. Pastor Colette. In the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, right now to release, release every satanist, every evil inside the body right now, inside the mind, inside the will, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come into all the witchcraft right now to release, release my sister right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come in, you Satan, all the witchcraft demon. Now listen to me now. You have no power, no authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I come in, you release her now in the name of Jesus. I command you release her mind. I command you release her body. I command, I command you release her emotion. I command you release every part of her body in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me, witchcraft. 
All the satanist witchcraft now. I come in right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to release her. Release her now. Release her now. I take the tree four corn and I bind you with the tree four corn right now. Come out. Come out from her body. Come out from her mind. Come out. Come out to all her body in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone they listen now in the name of Jesus. Satan, you have no power to the people of God. You have no authority to the people of God. I command you by the power of Jesus Christ, Satan, now listen to the mighty God right now. I command you by the power of Jesus now. Release the people of God now, all the witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ, all the satanist sacrifice out, out to the body. Out to the body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. We give all the glory to you, Father, to worship and glorify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We seal in the name of Jesus Christ what God is doing in heaven and earth. Yes. We seal it in the name of Jesus. Amen, Father. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Now we have a question here. Uh, Daisy, God bless you. Thank you for calling in. And you know what? Give God a shout for what yes. he did for you. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We love you. Thank Proud you. of you. Love Bye -bye, you guys. Bye-bye okay. now. Okay. Bye. Bye. Folks, that was Daisy. God bless her. There she was brave to say, hey, she did these evil games and she mm. got some, uh, she renounced them and got some ministry too. Praise the Lord. And I hope that uh, whoever uh, the listeners are out there, that if you had participated in them, that Praise you the actually Lord renounced Jesus. them at the same time. Now we have a question here. The question says, is it okay for churches to do trunk or treat on Halloween and hand out candy at the church so kids don't go out? Out, Pastor Valerie. I think mm. I think that is trick or treat, actually. Well, some, some 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 uh, the trunk or treat is it means that they have all the candy in the car trunk. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. New mm -hmm. to me. Okay. Yeah, that's a little new. And hand out candy at church, mm -hmm. so kids won't go out. Yeah. Well, early in the days when I was a young Christian, it was considered all right to have a. Uh, harvest festival at your church instead of Halloween where you would bring the kids and we'd get all dressed up. There weren't any witches or Draculas or anything unless the people brought kids that were unsaved. But, even, even biblical characters and things, but participating in this is that you're taking pleasure in unrighteousness and God doesn't want you to mimic the devil that's right. And you're just participating in a pagan holiday. And it, no, I don't believe that you should have these harvest parties. Not at I all. I don't mm -hmm. believe to. You know, uh, the thing about it is that there's been a, a group of uh, a wicked witches that were laughing at the Christians. said, look, at they're so stupid. They're celebrating. They're having their harvest festival. And they're celebrating on the day of our evil holy day. And so they said that these Christians don't even realize they're participating on our unholy day. And so even, um, I can't think of his name. Anton LaVey. Yeah, Anton LaVey says that he, he thanks the parents for the kids to celebrate at least one day out of year of evil day. And worship the devil. To worship the Satan. devil. Yes, yeah. uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Absolutely. So, wow. folks, this is all evil. You don't participate. You don't hand out the candy. It's all been given over to Satan, and you're just partaking in evil uh, food that's been dedicated to an idol. And so this is because we don't know this. When we eat this food, that becomes a curse inside of us. Matter of fact, I do many deliverances on adult people that have eaten uh, foods that have been dedicated to idols, and guess what, to your surprise, and this is what happened to them when they were younger, maybe in their 30s or 20s or even younger, and when they're these adults, when we come against those demons, we break and, and renounce eating those foods, chunks of food come out of their body of those candies or the food they ate 
decades ago. It became a curse and it was lodged in their body to stay in there so that demons can steal, kill, and destroy folks. Wow. Mm. This is why we don't play around with evil. God forbids it. And those who play with it and refuse the knowledge of God, they're not true believers because we uncovered the, actually on Saturday service that in 1 John chapter 3, it states that whoever sins is of the devil and doesn't know God. And if you're practicing sin, you're sinning every day, you don't know God. You're of the devil. But if you are practicing holiness or righteousness because the seed of God is planted in you, that seed gives you the hunger and desire to walk in holiness and righteousness so you don't sin. Folks, this is not being preached in the churches today, and we need, need to have a good understanding of that. Welcome to the Luke 418 Radio Network. This is Pastor Bill. Hi, Pastor Bill. Hi, Pastor Valerie. God Hi. bless you, Pastor Colette. God bless you. Hi. God bless. Yes. I have a question. Um, I'm so intrigued with today's um, information. I think for everything, I have a question for all of you um, regarding the topic. So, one, there was one time my husband was talking uh, he fell asleep watching a movie of a doll named Annie, a demonic doll movie. And I, I want to understand if this is because we're one flesh. But I'm just trying to understand. So he, was, he fell asleep watching it at his family's house, his cousin's house. And I went to sleep. I ended up being in my mom's house at the time. I wasn't with him in the same place. And I ended up dreaming about the big doll chasing me coming after me and I woke up so scared like what the heck was that and I called him and I said I was I just had this horrible dream of a doll chasing me coming after me and he goes oh that's interesting my cousins were watching Annie the, the demonic doll movie but I fell asleep watching it so how come that is like is there anything that why did that happen? That's weird. Because I wasn't even there with him, but I had the dream of what he was watching, which was weird. That's because you're one flesh. Now, were you mm -hmm. guys uh, 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 Christians at that time? No. Okay. Actually, yes, we were. Okay. We were Christians. But were you, Actually, were, yes, but were we you were. practicing we were. holiness and righteousness like, like you're doing now? Um, I mean, I believe I was, but I guess, now that I no, I guess not. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> not, so there is there is doors open. So you're mm -hmm. sleeping. If you have ungodly doors open, sleeping or wide awake, the devil can come into those doors that are open. There's ungodly spiritual doors that are open. So that's why we gotta close the doors. You know, shut the door, keep out the devil. Light mm -hmm. your candle, everything will be all right. <laughs> shut the door. Right? Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we got to do. Wow, that so, was... Yeah, so there's there's open doors. This wow. is why we're teaching this. Folks, there's open doors in your life that need to be shut. That's why you need to go through inner healing and deliverance. You have bitterness towards your mother, your father. You got an open and godly door. You mm -hmm. have resentment towards your husband or your spouse. You got an ungodly door that's open. If you have been molested as a child or been raped mm -hmm. and you haven't received inner healing and deliverance, you have an ungodly godly door that's open you know there was one there was one exorcist that asked this demon said hey how did you get in well i just walked in what do you mean you walked in the door was open mm -hmm. so folks these ungodly spiritual doors have to be closed and they have to be closed through forgiveness and you have to close them so after the deliverance i say that we close we we close the ungodly door and we seal it with yes. the blood of jesus Still, yeah. And we command them, don't ever come back again, and, and we got to make sure that person doesn't open that door. 
So if mm-hmm. you're out there having exes and you're having sex with each one of them and you go on to the next, you have ungodly doors and soul ties connected to those exes. And mm-hmm. so everyone you had sex with, you have received their curses and their demons. Now you're loaded. So now you need to oh. repent from them. You need to get inner healing and deliverance because they're still there on assignment to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. And because of the sexual sins, those sexual sins will bring diseases upon your body. And when you get older in your 50s and 60s, all of a sudden you're plagued with a lot of disease. It came from the sexual sins. Absolutely. Wow. Where's yes. the church teaching this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, folks, we're out of time. Wow. We got to go. We love you. We are so thankful that you tuned in and got the scoop on exposing the darkness of Halloween. Do not mm. participate in it. God says do not do it. Amen. And if you do do it, then you're rebelling against God. Your blood is on your own hands. We warned you about it. Our hands are clean. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, any last words, Pastor Colette? I just want to send a blessing to everyone. I want to send restoration. I want to ask you to release your mind right now to the Lord Jesus Christ and to don't let no door open tonight. Then you go to bed just to have peace, the love of Christ, ask forgiveness. And God will give you peace, and you will sleep with peace. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. We close every door, every, every door to everyone they listen, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give the glory, the glory to you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Valerie, you have any last words? Oh, just God bless everyone. And it's Mm. wonderful to get this information out, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, Pastor Colette, would you... Uh, join us on Halloween night. That'll be October the 31st on a Monday night so we can do deliverance Praise that the night. the Lord Jesus with blessing, yes. Yeah, we're going to have okay. the phone uh, lines open. You be mm-hmm. sure to tell your families and friends, folks. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to do deliverance. We love to kick the devil's butt on Halloween yeah, night. Yeah, that's one Amen? of the best nights to do it. That's right, then it is. prepare... Prepare yourself to pray to the welfare for everyone they have to call this night to receive yes. ministry. Absolutely. Amen. Will you be there, Pastor Colette? Amen. I will be there. All sure. right. Okay. I'll be there. Will you be there, Pastor Valerie? I'll be there. All <laughs> right. We'll be there, folks. Now, are you going to be there with your friends and family? That's what we want to say. Oh, they're already okay. saying yes, yes, yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. We love you. God love bless you. you. God bless you. Bless you. Be, sure, be sure to tune in this Wednesday on Luke 418, Kodania uh, Night. And that would be on the YouTube channel, Luke 418 uh, Church. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Like what we do? Share this on your socials and tell everyone.